Can you wear powder foundation if you're over 50? Some would say no, but I say I'm over 50 and I do what I want. That said, it has to be the right powder foundation because mature skin is different than younger skin. Maybe you've watched a couple of reviews already on the e.l.f. camo powder foundation, but the person in the video was much younger, maybe in their 30s or even in their 40s, and the way it performed on their skin is not necessarily how it's going to perform on our skin. So today I'm going to try out the e.l.f. camo powder foundation, but in order for you to know if this review will be helpful to you, you need to know a little bit about me. More particularly, you need to know a little bit about my skin. So in case you want to follow along, I'll put a little list of things here. And I am 56 years old. I'll be 57 at the end of the month. It's my birthday month. And I have lines and wrinkles and especially like, you know, I have crow's feet out here and some smile lines and enlarged pores here in my cheek area. I do use Retin-A in my Curology formula, and so sometimes I get dry patches, but in the midst of that, my skin is kind of combo normal to oily. So I have oiliness in my T-zone on my forehead, and then I get these dry patches, typically like right here above my lip, sometimes on my upper cheeks. Now, before we go any further, I want you to know that this is not the first time that I have tried this foundation. I was going to do a first impression full day wear test, which I did yesterday. And spoiler alert, it didn't go well. I will be inserting footage of all of that so you can see my first impressions and what I thought of it as I went through that first day wearing it. But I want to try it again. I want to try it with no primer and a different primer and see if I get a better result. As I said, I already had this on my face yesterday and I'm going to go ahead and insert some of that footage here. So I'm going to actually use the e.l.f. Jelly Pop Dew Primer. It is kind of gripping, and so I think it will really help keep that powder foundation where you want it. So I'll just take a couple of pumps of that and smear that in everywhere. A lot of times I'll also put a pore filling primer through my T-zone, but I'm not going to do that today. I don't want to layer too many products. I just want to be able to get a good read on this foundation. The color that I got is Fair 125C. So that's there, and now I am going to use the applicator that came with the product to do the right side of my face, and on the left side I'm going to use a brush. Got some product on the applicator, and we'll just go in and see what happens. Whoa. That is some serious coverage, and I probably have way too much. That one little swipe is going to do my whole face. Are you seeing this? No product? It may be a little light. That's okay. We'll fix it with some bronzer. I'm going to see if I can get a little bit of coverage on this darkness up here, these spots. I... I'm stunned. I really am. I did not expect that. I've tried not to watch too many reviews of this because I want to have my own opinions and I, wow. I'm going to blend that a little down my neck. I have larger pores here on my cheek and on my chin and I'm going to come in super really close. Can you see how blurred that is right there compared to this side. Now I know this side's a little shiny because of the primer, but I'm, I'm impressed. Okay, let's see what we can do with a brush. I am going to use this e.l.f. fluffy powder brush to put it on. And so I'm going to dip in and you can see it's kind of kicking up some powder. And then I'm going to tap that on. Now, I don't expect to get the same coverage on this side that I did on this side, so we'll see.
I may have to go over like the bridge of my nose just to make sure things blend and that sort of thing, but... I'm really surprised that with the brush I got this good of coverage. Very similar to what I got over here. I do think I got a little bit more of a blurring effect with the sponge than I did with the brush. But I'm going to leave it because I am doing a wear test so I don't want to confuse anything. However, I am going to blend the center of my nose because right now I have a line down the center of my nose. So It does look a little powdery and very matte right now. So I am going to put on the rest of my makeup and I will be right back. All right, so I have the rest of my makeup on. I did feel like the color was a little bit light, so I went ahead and bronzed up a little bit in the center of my face just to kind of take that brightness down a little bit. I'd probably go up a shade if I bought it again. When I first put it on, I was very impressed with the coverage and thought that it was going to be a good color match. Once I got it all on my face, I thought perhaps it might be a little light, and so I kind of tried to fix that with bronzer. It didn't feel heavy on my skin, but it did end up looking a little bit masky, and I don't know if perhaps using the applicator I just put on too much. And it seemed okay when I was under my studio lights, and then I went outside and I filmed in natural daylight, and I couldn't see how it looked because it was way too bright out there. But when I watched that footage back later, I was surprised to see that it really did kind of emphasize every pore and line and dry patch on my face. So I'm here in my kitchen in natural light. I used the e.l.f. Microfine Setting Mist and it really helped take down that powdery look to it. Um, I did think it looked a little too matte without the setting spray, just so you know. This is the brush side. And this over here is the applicator side. So here I am out in the bright sunshine and it is really bright. I can't even see the screen to know if I'm in the picture. I think I am. So I'm just going to close my eyes and let you guys see what this looks like in the sunshine. This is the applicator side. And this is the brush side. My pup. Come here. Here's my baby girl, isn't she adorable? This is, this is my Kyla. Yes, she's so sweet. Hi, baby. Yeah, oh, thank you. You want to shake? Thank you. Can you high five? Good girl. Good girl. I did do a five-hour check-in at the theater, and I'll insert that here. I'm going to take a second. It's just about time for rehearsal to start, and I thought I'd do a quick five-hour check-in. Unfortunately, I do not think that this is wearing very well. I feel like it's kind of wearing off, especially on the side that I used the brush, but on this side it is as well. It's worn off here underneath my nose. I have blown my nose a couple of times, but it's also looking really dry around my mouth and a little bit polka dotted pores here on my cheeks. And so I'm not sure that I'm fond of this, and I know a lot of people really love it, but so far it's not my best base day with this foundation and this primer. And then I did a nine hour check-in when I got home. Okay, I'm home, and it's been about nine hours since I put this on my face, and I thought it looked good when I first put it on. Not so sure about how I liked it out in the sunshine, and then at like the five hour mark, I thought it was looking not great. So I don't know, I may have to just wear it again and see then, but I'm seeing like some dryness right in here. It's not really gathered in my creases here. If I look on my forehead, it feels a little oily, but not bad. It still feels pretty matte, but it is pretty worn in this area of my face here especially more on the side that I did with the brush than the side that I did with the applicator. But both sides, kind of in my cheeks here, it's worn off. It's also worn right in here and on my chin. So unfortunately, I cannot give it just, you know, a two thumbs up. Yay, it's great. 
at least on my first wearing. And this is with kind of somewhat oily skin and a hydrating primer. I'm not really sure if you have dry skin, how this is going to wear on you. But on just a first impression, I'm not really sold on this, I'm afraid. So we're going to try it again. And this time I'm not going to use any primer on the left side of my face. And I will use the e.l.f. Matte Putty Primer on the right side of my face. It is a pore filling primer. And for other foundations that I use, it does help it to last longer. But I am going to only use a brush today. I feel like I got less of a masky coverage with the brush. So by the way, I did film this eye look before I got started on this one. And if it's already up, I will link it down below. And if not, then be sure that you are subscribed and that you hit the notification bell so you'll know when I upload it. All right, let me clip this hair out of the way. If we come in close and look at my skin, you can see that I have some darkness and red spots that need to be covered. I have a little bit of darkness, red spots over here. And so we're gonna start out slow and work our way up. Like I said, no primer over here, matte putty primer over here. You can see that I do really like this primer and I have a lot of experience using this primer. So we're just gonna put this in this center area down my nose and as I'm spreading this I'm pressing it into my pores the compact itself is very clean and simple and inside there's a mirror along with the powder as you can see since I used mine yesterday the embossing of the elf logo is a little bit worn off and then underneath you have the sponge that I did use yesterday, I will not be using it today. It's a little bit thin and I feel like it just kind of got too much product in the initial location where you put it down and then it was hard to spread. I am going to use this flat, dense kind of kabuki style brush to put this on because I think I can tap it in and buff a little bit better than with a fluffier brush. So I'm going to tap in and get the brush loaded up tap off a little of the excess. There's a lot of kick up in the pan, just so you know. And then I'm going to start kind of out here and work my way forward and just tap. And again, this is the side with no primer. The e.l.f. Camo Powder Foundation is a primer infused pressed powder foundation that delivers buildable coverage and an airbrushed finish. Okay, already, I am liking this better than I did yesterday when I put it on with the sponge. So, you know, sometimes first impressions are not really all that helpful because you learn things and then you make adjustments. So I'm going to go ahead and keep tapping and buffing this into my skin to get it really melded with my skin, whereas yesterday it felt like it was just sitting on top as a mask. So it claims that it's buildable and offers medium to full coverage with a semi-matte finish. It's a long wearing, lightweight formula. I have a little bit of flakiness right here. We are not gonna judge this foundation on those spots of my skin. Unfortunately, putting on foundation with a brush, whether it's liquid or powder, is going to make those flaky areas more pronounced because a brush is kind of an exfoliator. So it's a double-edged sword. Okay, so this is the side with the brush with no primer and difference between nothing on my skin there. I do think that it's given some really nice coverage. And like I said, I already like it better than I did with the applicator yesterday. So let's go in and put it on the other side. They claim an airbrushed even complexion, on the go shine control, talc free and non comedogenic, and available in a wide range of 30 shades. So I'm trying to do a lighter coat and then I will go in and put more in areas if I feel like I need to build it and we'll see how it builds. It did a pretty good job covering this redness right here. Let's see if we can get a little bit better coverage on that. Yeah, not bad, really. 
It's looking a little weird on my upper lip and maybe that's where I stopped the primer, but let's see if I can blend that in a little better. Okay, it's a little bit light for me, which is making it difficult to actually tell how I like it because it makes me look a little ghost-like, especially in the viewfinder. I look much paler in the viewfinder than I do in my mirror. And then I'm going to tap this under my eyes. The other thing I want to do before I publish this video is use this as a setting powder over a liquid foundation and see how that does. Because if I don't like it as a powder foundation, perhaps I can salvage it as a setting powder. All right, I know that nobody looks at me in a 10X mirror, but I'm gonna get all up and personal in my business and see how this looks in my magnifying mirror. And yeah, I have lots of flakiness on my forehead from my Retin-A, ignore that please. The brush has raised some extra skin flakes here that were not there, so it's looking kind of dry, but again, that's my skin's fault, I think. I feel like where I put the matte putty primer, it's a little more blurred than it is where I did not use the primer. So I'm gonna go off camera and finish up my makeup and I'll be right back. Okay, so now I'm back and I'm going to spray this with some setting spray. And I really, really like this e.l.f. Mint Melt Stay All Night Microfine Setting Mist. I use it a lot. I've used it with lots of different foundations. I know that it does help my makeup stay on longer. I know some people will say setting sprays don't make a difference, but for me, they do. And this one does. I have a dry sponge here. I didn't have a wet one, so I'm just going to kind of press that and see if that helps it meld even more into my skin. I'm going to come in real close and let you see how it looks. And I think today it does look pretty. Yesterday, I do not think that it looked pretty, but today I think it does. And I think it kind of almost has a little bit of a glow, whereas yesterday it looked really heavy and really masky. And so I'm not gonna blame that on the foundation. It very well could be user error. I used too much or I put it on with the wrong primer or whatever, but I like it better today. Now the question is, will it wear better than it did yesterday? And that we're going to have to wait to find out. Okay, so I'm outside. There's no sun, or at least not much sun, but there's enough for it to be really bright. So I'm just going to close my eyes and stop talking and let you see my face. And just like yesterday, I have a visitor. You wanna get in my picture? Oh, she's gonna lick off my foundation. Come on, let's see. Say hi. Say hi, baby. She's my good girl. Huh? Oh, I love you so much. All right, we'll see you in about five hours. Okay, so I am outside the theater and I'm doing this five hour check in here because it's crazy inside. We're about to start rehearsal. I do have a little bit of sunshine so you can kind of get that full sun effect. It's probably pretty harsh light. But once again, I am not happy with how this is looking in my nose area, around my chin, my mouth. Um, I have blown my nose about three times today and I realized that, you know, that's kind of hard on a foundation, but I think a foundation should be able to last through three nose blowings. If you've got allergies or a cold, okay, it's not going to last, but it should be able to hold up to a little bit. So anyway, I do kind of see the polka dot pour thing happening and just really not happy with how this is, is wearing on my face. So I will check in again when I get home for the nine hour check in and see if it's worn off more or if this is about as far as it's going to go and then we'll we'll give our final thoughts on it here we are at the end of day two of the elf camo powder foundation wear test and while maybe it looks a little bit better than it did yesterday it still doesn't look great i'm going to come in close and see if you can see this note my nose it looks weird on my nose it's all broken up I don't have any foundation on this part of my face on either side, underneath my nose or on my chin. It's also kind of worn off here. And that's not usually somewhere that I have problems with foundation wearing off. The sides of my face still look okay. The blush, bronzer, and highlighter held up fine on that part of my face. My forehead feels 
pretty oily. The claim about on-the-go shine control, I don't look terribly shiny through here, um, but I am shiny on the forehead. And I'm going to turn out the ring light because I, it, the lighting will get darker, but I think you'll be able to see better what's going on on my face. So you can see how much redness is coming through on my nose. And I think you can see how it's all broken up, like right in here and in there. So it just really did not hold up. And it's looked this way from five hours in. It's not really settled in lines and wrinkles, but it's just worn off weird. And I need foundation to last at least nine hours. And this one has looked this way since five hours in, maybe before. I didn't even look at my face before the five hour check-in. So I don't know when it kind of started looking weird. But as much as I love e.l.f. products in general, I can't recommend this. And honestly, I do not have an e.l.f. foundation that I like. I tried the e.l.f. Cam the CC cream and I did not like the way that performed on my skin either. So while I have a lot of e.l.f. products that I just really love, so far foundations have not made that list. And I am going to try this as a setting powder over a foundation. And I will update that in the description box below because I'll do that in the next couple of days while I'm editing, but I'm not going to film that. I realize that my experience with this camo powder foundation is different than most of the reviews out there. I did watch a couple today because I wanted to see if anybody else had that issue that I had yesterday with it just breaking up like it did. And I did find one video where the wear was about what I had, but for the most part, a lot of people really liked it. So everybody's experiences with makeup are different, but this was mine. And so unfortunately, I just don't feel like I can recommend this to you because it just did not work well for me. That said, everybody's experiences are different. And if you have used it, please share your experience with us down below. I'd love to hear how it worked for you. I'm going to post some videos for you to click on so you can watch some more of my content. And I hope that you all have a beautiful, blessed day, and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.